So recently we've been looking at a lot of neoclassicist paintings and we're going to continue this week in that same vein with this painting from the French master Jean-Auguste Dominique Angre. We've looked at one of Angre's paintings before, Oedipus explaining the enigma of the Sphinx. And Angre painted this in 1811 and it's a scene from Homer's Iliad. The thing that I like the most about this painting is how well Angre was able to depict this severe contrast between the grandeur and the, the might and the majesty of the supreme Olympian male deity, Zeus, or Jupiter, if you want to use the Roman version of the god like Angra did when he titled this painting. But that depiction in comparison with the submissiveness and, you know, the, the sort of the half-nakedness of this female nymph next to him. And this huge contrast, which Angra depicted, I think, so successfully here, was considered by many to be a pictorial representation of patriarchy, this idea of male power as dominant over female subservience. But you can also look at it in a slightly different light, which I think is maybe a little bit less um, <laughs> sexist, perhaps, or maybe not, depending on who you ask. But you can look at it in terms of the voluptuousness and the sensuality of the female versus the kind of authoritative austerity or sternness of the male. So no matter which uh, angle you, you look at it from, you can see that there's you can see that there's such a strong contrast between the depiction of Zeus in this painting and then the depiction of the female, whose uh, Thetis was her name. She was a sea nymph and she was Achilles, the, the great Greek warrior Achilles mother. But before we get into the story a little bit more, let's let's just keep looking at the painting. Another difference, Jupiter faces directly at the viewer. His arms and his legs, they're spread across the entire canvas, sort of this sprawling posture that he's sitting in. He's sitting on this marble throne, and the color of his cloak complements the color of that throne as well, whereas Thetis isn't facing the viewer. She's looking upwards in supplication towards Zeus. You can see how Angra has painted her in the classical feminine style with the, the sensuous curves, and this kind of look of importuning the god who controls the fate of her son. And also her dark green dress, as opposed to complementing the throne on which Zeus is sitting, kind of complements more of the, the cobalt blue skyscape in the background. Also note her hand placement. She has one hand resting on Zeus's leg and then another one tugging gently, maybe a little bit affectionately, at his beard, but Zeus seems to be oblivious to this. He's just staring forward, steadfast at the viewer, not affected emotionally at all by Thetis's, um, her emotional request. And what was it? Well, for that, you need to l know a little bit about the context of the Iliad. Basically, what happened was, you know that the Iliad, hopefully, was about the Trojan War. Agamemnon was the leader of the Greeks, and Achilles was the best Greek warrior. And in a particular battle... Uh, the Greeks had won, and they had taken as a trophy, um, well, they took two things as a trophy, actually. Achilles took a Trojan woman as a um, captive named Briseis as his compensation for battle, and then Agamemnon stole a woman named Chryseis. Briseis and Chryseis, they sound pretty similar. Um, but the problem was, Chryseis' father, who's just who was named Chryses, <laughs> the names here can get kind of confusing, um, was, a, was a priest of Apollo, and he came to Ameg Agamemnon with this huge ransom, and he said, you know, take gold, take silver, but please, just give me my daughter back. And it was a very reasonable request, but Agamemnon denied it. And then, being a priest of Apollo, Chryses then prayed to Apollo and asked them to just sort of wreak havoc on the Greeks, and he did. Greeks were plagued with disease, they were dropping left and right, and Achilles finally came up to Agamemnon and said, hey, you gotta give Chryseis back to her father, or else, you know, this plague is gonna wipe us all out. And Agamemnon was very reluctant to do that, but eventually he did, but on the condition that he would then take Achilles' prize, his trophy, Briseis, um, as compensation for having to give back Chryseis. And Achilles wasn't happy about that at all. So then he refuses to fight in the Trojan War, and is, he's very upset, and his mother comes to him, who was, um, at this point, like I said, a nymph, and she says, well, Achilles, why are you so upset? And I'll read you the passage from the Iliad, I have it marked here, 
where Angra drew inspiration for this painting. At length, when dawn had risen a twelfth time, the everlasting gods returned to Olympus, Zeus in the lead. Thetis honored the vow she gave her son. She rose through the sea waves in the early morning and sped to the high heavens where she found Cronus' son sitting alone on deep furrowed Olympus's loftiest peak. She knelt beside him and circled his knees with her left arm while her right hand touched his beard. She then entreated Zeus, son of Cronus, Father Zeus, if ever I came to your aid by word or deed, grant me a wish today. Honor my son, whose destiny all too soon will come, but whom Agamemnon, the king, dishonored by taking away his prized reward. Restore my child's honor, Olympian Zeus. Give Troy the upper hand until the Greeks grow desperate, and exalt my son Achilles. So one interesting thing that I noticed from that passage is that it says her right hand tugged on Zeus's beard while her left hand encircled his knee. I'm not sure why Angra decided to paint it the opposite way. It could have been for aesthetic purposes, maybe, although I don't really know why that would have made that much of a difference. If you have any ideas, drop me a comment. I hope you've enjoyed this painting as much as I do. Have a great week, everybody, and I'll see you again next week.